So here we are on Public Exposure investigating the foreclosure crisis. And we say investigate because the thing that we're trying to do is to provide information for you to determine what your own steps are going to be, whether it's your own mortgage, whether it's whether or not to buy a house now, whether it's to, to rent or whether it's to do something else. Howard Bono of the Financial Revival Group, which is also myfinancialrevival.com, is here with us. Howard, we're talking about an awful lot of things here, but right now what I want to talk about is something that you, you say is, the, is a, it's, it's pride. And sometimes pride gets in the way of good business decisions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tell me about how that relates to mortgages. Well, when I was in the mortgage business, I ran my complete business strictly on a referral basis. Had a nice mortgage business, and when we started the Financial Revival Group, we really thought that we were going to be able to use that same model to develop our business based on referrals. What we completely miscalculated was the fact that if people decide that they're going to give their house back or file a bankruptcy or they're looking to do a loan modification or they're trying to get refinanced without success, they don't go to work and shout that around at the water cooler. So mm -hmm. this is one of those issues where pride, people feel alone. So people that are watching this, for example, are probably going to be going, you know something, I'm the only person that's stupid enough to get myself into this situation, and I'm not going to tell anybody, not family, not neighbors, not friends, not anybody. And that's really, I think, the worst thing that you can do. You mm -hmm. really have to do some research. You can't let that pride factor uh, get in the way of, of dealing with this because you're absolutely not alone at all in this situation. Okay, let's go to our example. Mark and Sarah, 2006, they bought a house for $295,000. It was probably worth every penny then. Uh, that was when they paid $12,000 down, $75,000 income between the two. Times changed. 2011, uh, the house is worth one hundred eighty-five. dollars they owe 277, their income is less than $50,000. Is pride going, going to get in the way of Mark and Sarah being able to move forward? Yeah, it certainly can. If Mark and Sarah are saying, you know, we were just young and dumb and we made this mistake and we're just going to have to eat it, um, this could impact that one purchase could impact the rest of their financial lives and probably will deeply impact the relationship. So should they walk away? You know, that's a question that is not, you can't provide a universal answer to that question. It's very individually based. There are nine options that people have in terms of the way to deal with this situation. And walking away is just simply one of them. And for some people, walking away is the perfect solution. For other people, walking away would destroy something inside of them. It's not a good solution. Mm -hmm. So there's no universal answer to this. Well, yeah, but, but what I'm hearing you saying that in a, in a financial situation like this, um, the, the walking away aspect is more damaging to an individual from an emotional standpoint than it is from a business standpoint. Is that right? No, not really. Once, they, once people really get it to understand that the deck in, in this whole housing crisis, the deck is purely stacked against them. The example of that is $500 billion of money that could have gone to refinance every house in America went to the banks with the hope that the banks would spread that money around. They didn't do it. The deck is stacked against individual homeowners. So once people get that, they get really angry. And what we try to do is to temper that anger to say, you can't make decisions based on emotion. You can't make your financial decisions based on anger. You've got to separate those emotions. You have to look at this from a dollars and cents business perspective and make your decision based on the logical side of this. So take on the Spock approach, you know, the logical side. And, and that's what we did with Mark and Sarah to get them to look at the logical side of this to make their decision. Actually, we're going to go to Confucius. Oh. We don't even have to go to Spock. We're going to go to Confucius because he said that uh, this very important business principle is this. A wise man makes his own decisions and an ignorant man follows public opinion. In this instance, the public opinion could be the moral pressure or the, the pride, perhaps? You know, the moral pressure, there was a big, last summer, a, a year ago, huge, lots of articles out, you know, the media was really pushing the moral issue, saying you could destroy your neighborhood, you could destroy the whole economic system, you have to keep paying your, your mortgage. Mm -hmm. the it's mor the American way and it's yes, patriotic. it didn't work. It didn't work. People are saying, look, if you're asking me to make my personal financial decisions for myself and my family and include my neighborhood, my community, 
my city, my county, my state, and the, and the whole of the United States, that's too big for me. And people are saying, uh -uh, I have to take a look at this based on my own particular situation. And the pride factor, once they overcome that, they start to do the research. Once they do the research, they realize that the pride factor is simply going to cost them money because there are solutions, many solutions, that will, will save them money in this particular situation. In another segment, you said that one in four here in the United States are, are underwater in their mortgage. That means that a lot of people are probably thinking about walking away. So, I mean, is there going to be the, the, the public scorn if somebody walks away from their mortgage? No, what we're seeing is just the opposite of that. What we're seeing is financial planners are, um, and I can give you an example. For, for the members of our group, we have a meeting once a month for our members, and it is facilitated by a family counselor. Our family counselor came in at one of our early meetings and said, I just can't do this. These people are giving their houses back, and they're happy about it. And I said, well, <laughs> y y what's going on is this big burden has been released. They have money in the bank now, which they didn't have before. And so I asked her if she coaches you know, or counsels people that have drug problems. And she said, yes. And I said, well, you don't agree with that, so get over it. <laughs> she had gone to talk to her financial planner, and, um, and everybody's financial planner, of course, is the best in the universe. Yes. You know? And so she came to our meeting and said, I was talking to my financial planner, who's the best in the universe. And you know, I asked him about this group that I'm counseling and said that they were happy about this. And he says, well, they're smart. And she says, no, you don't understand. These are people that are not paying their house payments. They're giving their houses back, and they're happy about it. And he says, yeah, they're smart. Hmm because they're making this decision now, which is going to, they're going to move backwards a little bit, you know, in terms of credit scores and those kinds of things. But they're going to be able to regroup in order to really move forward as, as our economy works its way through uh, whatever it still has left to work its way through. Thank you very much, Howard. So the, the moral of the story is don't let pride get in the way. We'll see you next segment right here on Public Exposure.